Holy Spirit, thank You that we can trust You. Thank You, Father, that we can trust You and that we can trust Your heart. Thank You that we can trust Your Word. And as we look to Your Word, Holy Spirit, we just say You have permission to work as You see fit. And we just say that, Holy Spirit, we need You to work. And we need You to have freedom because without You, as we look to these word, this Word... They're just words on a page unless you bring them to life. Lord, we believe that they were not only written for the people uh, during the time that they were first inspired, but they were meant for us right here, right now. You knew where we would be. You knew our names. You knew what we would be going through. And they speak to us. And so speak them again, Lord. Speak them again to us here in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So, the last few weeks, we've been talking about Holy Spirit. I'm going to step on your flags. Hope that's not like the bad thing to do. (laughs) So, we've been talking about Holy Spirit. And many of you are right here. You're on the proverbial edge. And Holy Spirit sounds good, but ah, you've got some fears. Kind of like the statement up here, snakes, scorpions, and Holy Spirit. Now, why would you put Holy Spirit in with that group? Because Satan has done it. And we're going to go to the Word and we're going to show you exactly where he's done it. And he's done it so that you would fear Holy Spirit. It's a brilliant strategy. If you look at any communist country, any country where they seek to oppress its people, one of the primary strategies they use is to cause fear in people to fear freedom. Why is the U.S. of A. so hated? Because we are free. And if other countries do not fear that freedom, they might receive it. And so, where did that strategy come from? came from the greatest strategist of all time, besides God, anyone who's created. came from Satan himself. He's the genius of it. And it's in the church. And so, we're going to address those fears today. And we're going to show you how those fears are based on lies, lies that come from the enemy, so that you can cast them aside, so that you can let go and fall in. Would you catch me? No, I'm just kidding. I don't trust you, bro. (laughs) Exactly. (laughs) If you have your Bibles, we're going to be in the book of Luke this morning. Book of Luke, the 11th chapter. Um, I'm going to begin in verse 1 here. Uh, and the context is, is that the disciples are asking Jesus to teach them how to pray. And the first several verses that we're going to read here are just a context for where we're going today. Where we're really going to focus on is uh, the last set of verses. We're going to touch on 5 through 8. And then we're really going to dig in as we get down into um, the last remaining verses. So I want to give you some context here though. Um, just beginning in verse 1. I want to read through this. It says, Once Jesus was in a certain place praying. As He finished, one of His disciples came to Him and said, Lord, teach us to pray just as John taught His disciples. Jesus said, This is how you should pray. Father, may Your name be kept holy. May Your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need and forgive us our sins 
as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. Then he goes into verse 5 and he's going to add something. It says, then teaching them more about prayer, he used this story. So he gave them an example, but now he wants to bring something else into the picture that he knows that they're going to need and he knows that you're going to need. Okay? He's going to talk about perseverance here. This is so, so needed. Perseverance as you walk with the Lord. Because as you walk with the Lord, you've probably heard it termed many times as a journey. It's very much a journey. The Lord keeps taking you through things, and as He takes you through things, He goes deeper and deeper and deeper. It's like peeling an onion back, if you will. He just keeps peeling more back. Peeling, peeling more back. And you just, you, he, he keeps taking you back through things that... You know, it's kind of like, gee, I feel like I've been here before. And you have. But this time he's going deeper. He's going deeper. He's always after something. And so in order to receive all that he has for you, it takes a perseverance. You've got to hear that, okay? You're not going to just say a prayer and poof, there it is. Now you may pray and there's a suddenly, okay? Absolutely, those things happen. But it takes, uh, as we were talking in our Sunday school this morning, takes us coming alongside God and incorporating some spiritual disciplines and so on. There, there's this role that we play in the midst of it. And perseverance is so important. So he talks about this through a story. And he says this. He says, suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, a friend of mine has just arrived for a visit and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, Don't bother me. The door is locked for the night, and my family and I are all in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, though he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking long enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. Now understand this. He is not comparing the friend who is asleep to God, okay? That's not who God is, okay? God doesn't sleep. He doesn't need sleep, all right? And when you come to Him, He's not like, oh, it's them again. That's not the point of this. When you read through Scripture, Scripture makes it very clear that's not God's heart. That's not who He is. So why is He framing it in this way? He's framing it in this way because He's saying this. Even somebody who doesn't really want to do it if you are persistent, eventually something happens. And it's much more so with God the Father. Um, if you are someone who has kids, for instance, uh, and you love your kids, or if you're a child, I think you're a child, and you have a parent or a guardian who loves you, you've probably learned something about persistence. My kids know persistence. Cold is a great example. <laughs> right before the message, I'm walking up here. He is persistent. He wants to play in this three-on-three -three tournament, <laughs> and he won't let it go. <laughs> and so right before the message, he's like, hey. Blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, hey, I got other things going on right now. <laughs> but why does he do that? Okay? Because he knows I love him. Okay? And he knows that if he shares with me something that's important to his heart, it does influence me. And I don't apologize for that, okay? Because I do love him and I want to see, uh, I, I want to see things brought to his heart that bring him joy. Well, guess what? It is so much more so with God the Father. So much more so. Because God the Father doesn't have the flesh and the sinful nature and all that. He doesn't have the jealousy and, you know, just all the things that go in. He has none of that. And so when we are persistent with God, He loves to give us things. But here's the thing. Sometimes He withholds things because of that love for us. Because He doesn't want to give us things that will harm us. One thing I want you to notice in this passage is that the person is going to the friend because they want to feed somebody else that's coming in. They want to use the gift to give away. So I want to clue you in on something here. 
If you've been persistent about something and haven't seen it, part of the reason maybe is that you're only praying for yourself. You know, you want something not so that you can share it with others and give it away, but so that you can hoard it (laughs) and hold on to it. And it's all about you. And God loves you so much. He wants to keep that from you because he doesn't want to see you hurt. Okay, and I'm the same way. If my kids are asking for something, uh, you know, if they're asking for a boatload of candy, okay, if I really love them, I'm going to protect them from that, especially if I know they lack self control and they're just going to, you know, what you see what I'm saying, okay? So that's the way that God is. So one of the things that we want to see in this is that God is saying, be persistent. But I want you to see here what really moves his heart is when you are praying for something that you will use and you will share and you will use for others. That is what really moves his heart. Now, I'm only touching on this. I want to keep moving forward because I believe the Lord wants to focus our time on down here as we continue to read. Now, in verse 9, he says, And so I tell you, keep on asking, and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking, and you will find. Keep on knocking, and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks, receives. Everyone who seeks, finds. And to everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Now, I want to pause there. We're going to continue on, but I want to pause. A couple things I want to say there. Um, God, you, you, you've probably heard this before. Uh, you are made uniquely. God has a plan for your life. There are things that God wants to do in your life. But here's the deal. In order for God to accomplish the things that he wants to in your life, you must walk through things. He must shape your heart. There is no other way around it. This is what a loving father does. A loving father or a loving mother looks at their child and they see the weaknesses. They see the vulnerabilities, but they also see the potential. And what if they really love them and they really have an understanding, they're going to let them walk through hard things so that they will learn, which will later help them with the potential that they have. It's the only way that God can really work in us because we're not robots. We, God created us with our own will. And, and that's, that's part of the image of God that he's put in us. And he doesn't, he doesn't regret that. He loves that. And so God wants to work with that. So here's my point. God is saying to you, don't get frustrated and give up. Keep going. You are not done yet. Is it happening slowly? In your mind, yes. But understand this. When you receive Jesus, if you haven't received Jesus, you don't have this. But if you've received Jesus, you are living in eternity right now. This is part of time. Time is never going to end. So quit getting in a hurry. Just live right now. You have eternity. Now, I I want to pause here, though, and say to you that if you've not surrendered to Jesus, you do not have eternity. You have a limited time, okay? And so just get that taken care of. Surrender to Jesus, okay? But for those of you who've surrendered to Jesus, you have eternity. And so don't give up. Keep going. God has really good things for you. And it's not that he's holding out because, you know, you just haven't earned it quite yet. You just haven't quite given enough. No, he's forming things in you. And so many times God will share things with us early on in our walk. Think about King David for a minute. When King David was a young guy, uh, God sent a prophet to him and said, you're going to be king. This is what I'm going to do with you. I'm anointing you right now. Here it is. But David did not become king right then. David went through a lot of trials. Why? Because God wanted to fashion his heart to do unbelievable things that he could not do right then. Hear this. God wants to do unbelievable things through you in your life that he can't do right now. But you must surrender. Okay? So quit getting me like, oh, he's not answering. It says, you know, knock and so on. And he's going to, but it's not happening. It's happening. Keep surrendering. Okay? Keep surrendering. And part of what you need to surrender is what we're getting in, ready to get into, okay? And what we're getting ready to get into can be a suddenly that can really break some things loose, and it's really going to be important. So let's go there. 
So he continues on. He doesn't stop there because there's some other things that he needs to address here because he knows the strategies of Satan and what Satan's going to do. And that's what we're going to get into. So verse 11, he says, You fathers, if your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? It's a rhetorical question. It's like, duh, of course not. But he doesn't stop there. He says, and if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? All right, he's talking about things that normally we think of. You can't trust them. They're going to harm you. All right, as loving parents, we don't do that. Of course not. So if you sinful people, I mean, that's the whole thing. I'm a sinful guy, yet I love my kids enough that I'm not going to do that. But quite frankly, sometimes out of my sinfulness, I harm them because I, I have sinfulness. But God doesn't. So he's, he's using that as a comparison to say this. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? Now, it is no coincidence that the term there that is used is that God will give the Holy Spirit. This is the gift that God wants to give you. He wants to give you Holy Spirit. But here's the thing that you need to know about Holy Spirit. And some of you have probably heard this terminology before. Holy Spirit is a gentleman. Holy Spirit is not like a demon. Okay? A demon, Satan, they come in and, and they want to take over. They are going to take over. They are going to manipulate you. And they are going to have their way. Holy Spirit is not that way. Holy Spirit is a gentleman who comes in and says, knock, knock, would you like me to come in? And if you just stand there and say nothing, he's not coming in. Amen. Right. You got to say, absolutely. Do you hear what I'm saying? So if you've received Jesus, okay, and, and you've repented and you've gone through baptism, you know what you need to do? You need to voice it. Holy Spirit, come on in. I'm yours. Why would he say, why is this in here? Because that's what God is saying. I have a gift for you. I want to give, but I'm not going to barge in. I'm not going to barge in. I'm not going to take over. I must be invited. So here's what I'm saying. You must invite. This is so dangerous. Okay? A person who believes in Jesus, a person who believes in the Word is dangerous to a certain extent. But only to a certain extent, because here's the deal. If Holy Spirit's not in control of your life, your life's a wreck. Amen. Now, some of you are better at hiding it than others, okay? But still, your life is not something that other people are looking at and saying, I want to be a part of that. And so because of that, sometimes people who aren't in control of the Holy Spirit, but yet they believe in Jesus, they believe in the Word, they walk around, and uh, I'm not going to hit anybody with this because it's electronic and I might break it, but for those of you who have ones that aren't, I mean, they're just walking around just hitting. They're just whack, whack. Why are they doing that? Because they believe in it. Their heart is good. They're kind of like Paul, okay? Their heart is good, but, but here's the deal. They don't have Holy Spirit in them that's radicalized their life in such a way that others are looking at their life saying, I want some of that. It's all they have. Well, here's the deal. Like Paul, God wants to radicalize your life like Paul. You see, here's the deal. Satan has given you some lies that we're going to get to just like Paul had been given some lies. Paul was attacking those people who were following Jesus and who were filled with the Holy Spirit. He wanted them dead. Why? Because here's the deal. As I said before, a person who has, who believes in Jesus, believes in the Word, is somewhat dangerous, but a person who's filled with Holy Spirit and is living a transformed life that is totally different, <laughs> watch out. That's crazy dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. He doesn't want it. And so because of that, he's going to put fear out there. 
And that's what Paul was feeling. Paul was feeling fear. And so he's like, we got to get rid of these people. We got to put them in jail. We got to kill them. And that's exactly what has happened with so many people who aren't filled with Holy Spirit. They're like, we got to get rid of these people. Okay? And Satan does not want you going near Holy Spirit. So how has he kept you from going near Holy Spirit? Well, he has told some of you, and some of you have, have heard this, okay, through people you trust and so on, that if you open yourself up and you say, God, I want Holy Spirit just to take over, you could be opening yourself up to a demon. Some of you believe this. It's been taught in the evangelical church. That's why Jesus gave us this passage. That's why He said, a good father's not going to give you a snake. A good father's not going to give you a scorpion. If you ask for Holy Spirit, He's going to give you Holy Spirit. Do you see what I'm saying? But so many of us who have been brought up in the evangelical church, who care what the denomination is, we've been taught, you better be careful. You better guard yourselves. If you release control, oh man, it's, it's going to be bad. But you know what? We have discovered it's a lie. For instance, some of you, when you heard about the gift of prophecy, when you heard about the gift of prophecy, it freaked you out. You pictured somebody with crazy hair constantly interrupting people and calling down fire. That's what you thought prophecy was. But what have we learned? We've learned that Holy Spirit is a caring person. And when Holy Spirit takes us over, He uses us to encourage people in their life. And so instead of me walking around, looking to correct somebody, trying to draw attention to myself. Instead, I'm allowing Holy Spirit to just give me words for people that will encourage them in their walk, and I'm going up to them, and I'm not even using King James language. <laughs> I'm just talking in my own voice and whatever. And I'm just saying, hey brother, you know, I feel like God's just been telling me that He wants to encourage you. And, you know, although you're going through whatever it is, your job, your health, whatever, he, he, he's doing this in it, or He's getting ready to do that. Whatever it is, he, he just brings an inspiration. That's what we found the prophetic gift is. And it's like that with so many things, but it takes us giving over. Now here's the other thing. We fear that if we give in to Holy Spirit, He's going to turn us into somebody that we are not. Here's the beauty of God. When Holy Spirit, Spirit fills you, you're still you. Because God created you. you. It does not mean that you are going to act like somebody else. We are all different people here. Okay, When I'm filled with Holy Spirit, I, I'm not going to suddenly grow a man bun and play drums. <laughs> Sorry, you're on the front, dude. It's what happens. You see what I'm saying, though? Because the enemy puts thoughts like that in our head. Well, I don't want to act like so-and-so. Well, you know what? You're not going to. But what you are going to act like is you're going to be the free, real you. Because right now, without Holy Spirit, you're not the real you. You are crushed by the flesh and you are crushed by sin and you've been living in it so long you think it's who you are and it's all you know and it's not even you. You are a different person but you've got to give it over to Holy Spirit. And you've got to understand that when you ask, God's not going to give you a demon. You're going to be controlled by Holy Spirit. But it takes you saying, I trust you, God. And God keeps taking me deeper and deeper down that path. And I'm sure you've got your own stories, but over and over, God has shown me that, that I can still be me. You know, I've shared with you many times about entering full-time ministry and pastoring. I wanted nothing to do with it because I pictured those guys as pansies. You know, 
They walk around in loafers and, you know, little sweaters, and they don't know how to swing a hammer. And I'm like, I am not going to be that guy. Well, guess what? God showed me I can still be me. Yeah, I can host a class in the sanctuary right here that teaches people how to hit people. Yeah, that's right. I can have another job where I actually carry weapons. I don't have to be a wimp because that's not who God is. You see what I'm saying? And so what God has taught me is I don't have to fear the path that He has for me. I can say, God, You've got control. I trust You. But in order to do that, you've got to get over the fears. You see, it's one thing to read the Word, but it's another thing to say, I trust this enough to step into it. And one of the things that God has to do for many of us to get us there is He's got to put us in a position where we have no other choice. It's so sad, but it's true. Now, I've shared this story many times, but it's so relevant, I need to go back. Okay, so I didn't want to pastor. Well, finally I gave in and I said, okay, God, I'm going to do this. And so I began preaching. Well, in preaching, I really wanted Holy Spirit to take control because He's the only one who knows what's going on inside of your heart, what you're facing. He's the only one that can speak to you. I can't. I mean, you know, like Shane was talking about going on experience and so on. Yeah, I've got all kinds of experience. Oh yeah, I've been educated in all kinds of schools. I can't speak to your heart. Only God can do that. And so in understanding that, I was praying for that. But here's the thing. I was trained in a school that didn't train me how to do that. It trained me how to use man's tools to bring something together that's just really polished that people just go, oh, that's impressive. But I found it doesn't change anybody. It doesn't do anything. And so, you know, I was going through a phase where I'm praying, God, I need you to speak. God, I need you to speak. But here's the problem. I wouldn't let him have control. I was absolutely scared that if I said, God, you got this, I would fall on my face. Now, here's the thing. I, I wanted God to take control, but I didn't, I, I didn't want to put, I needed a backup plan. And see, God's not going to work like that. He needs you to come alongside, okay? Like for instance, if you're like, you know what, God, I want to be a really good giver. I was, this illustration was given by uh, Robert Morris. I was listening to a message by him. You know, if you're like, I want to be a really good giver, and you walk by the offering box, Holy Spirit is not going to magically write a check for you and jump out of your pocket into the offering box. <laughs> you're going to have to participate. You're going to have to say, okay, I'm going to write this out. I'm going to write it for the amount. I'm going to do this. You see what I'm saying? So with my preaching, I wanted God to take over, but here's what I wouldn't do. I wouldn't stop doing all the other things that I was doing, which was mapping out this, you know, highly technical message full of all kinds of different things that meant to wow you. But I was just asking, okay, God, now here, here's, here's my offering. You take it and do something really good. And God was like, nope. No, 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 no. I want to really show you my power. You need to do something different. I wasn't willing to do it. So many of you know the story. God put me in a place where I had no other choice. He sent me to India, okay? And I took about two messages with me. And those two messages were used up in about the first four hours. And I had about two more weeks of messages. Uh, and I was preaching, I don't know, two or three messages a day. Uh, they were taking me to one place, getting me out, and you would have hundreds of people and you would speak. They would put you in a car, drive you to someplace else, you would get back out, and there you go. Well, guess what? I, oh, and here's the other thing, and many of you have heard the story. Over in India, they don't have lines on the road, they don't have signs, they don't have signals. You jump in and you hold on. Amen. And you literally can't read. I mean, it's not like a little rough and then you get a break. A little rough, you, I mean, it's like you can't read. And I was like, God, this is it. I mean, you either come through here or I look like a total idiot. And so here's what God showed me. And again, many of you know this. In just standing up, God would suddenly just bring scriptures to mind. And then he would connect things. And then, nah, 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 nah. okay, do you see what I'm saying? So God had to put me in that place where I had no other choice. And then all of a sudden I saw 
that He took over and came through and I discovered that His words are true. This is where God wants to go with you. Okay? But, but it means you saying, Holy Spirit, I need you. And then you let Him have control. He's not going to give you a demon. He is not going to turn you into somebody that you are not. You are still going to be you, except you're going to be the real you that you really are. The best you. You're still going to look like you. You're not going to turn into the freak that you've been seeing on TV. You're going to be you. You're going to talk the way that you talk. But you're going to talk with power. Do you want to be set free? God's offering. Jump in. If you would stand, please. We're going to end our time in ministry here. Just let the Lord lead you, okay? Let the Lord lead you. Father, uh, you have so much more to say on this, but I feel like you're saying that's enough for now. <laughs> so I just pray, Lord, that the things that need to be highlighted here would be highlighted. Lord, you have different things to say to different people because they're in different places. But I pray whatever our fears are, that we would trust you. That we would let you have this and that we would say yes to Holy Spirit. Trusting that you're not going to give us a demon. And Lord, may we understand, Lord, that we need to, to welcome you and say, come on in. Because you're not going to barge in. That's not who you are. And we're so grateful, Lord, that that's the kind of love that you have for us. Holy Spirit, come and just invade us. Take us over. Because we want to be the people that we were created to be. In Jesus' name.